From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello everyone, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. We're honored this week to have as our guest former Tennessee Governor Winfield Dunn on Inside Politics. Governor Dunn was our state's chief executive from 1971 until 1975. While the volunteer state today may be very deep red in its politics, when Winfield Dunn he became, took office, he became the first Republican to hold that seat in over 50 years. Governor Dunn, it is a great privilege to have you with us. Welcome back on the show. Pat, it's a delight to be here. Thank you. You know, Governor, I'm sure you know that times change. When you ran for office, Republicans were just becoming competitive politically statewide. Did you ever suspect the dominance that the GOP would have in the state today back in those times? Uh, Clearly, no. Uh, we hoped to gain a foothold. We had no control in the legislature. And suddenly becoming the governor of the state, a Republican found himself in a peculiar position. Now, when you ran for governor in 1970, one of your campaign chairmen was somebody named Lamar Alexander. He was indeed. Uh, did you see in him at the time somebody who would be a future governor, a future multi-term U.S. senator? I don't senator? think that I actually focused on that position, but he clearly was devoted to politics and to America. And I'm not at all surprised how well he's done, uh, and he certainly has the intellect to do it, so we're very proud of Lamar. To contrast how much politics has changed over the years, when, when statewide candidates run today, they, they plan it, they poll it, they work at it for years before they even begin to announce to run for office. Mm -hmm. You announced in April of 1970 and the primary was in August. That's just almost amazing. The media calls you Winfield Who at the time because <laughs> nobody knew who you were as a Memphis dentist. That's true. What made you think you had a chance to win? My naivety. Actually, if I had known all of the facts that existed at the time, I doubt seriously if I would have had the courage to try. Well, you had to be—you had to beat some pretty big people even in the primary. I mean, you, you <laughs> ran against a, a sitting Speaker of the House who yes. was a Republican at the time here in Tennessee. You ran against a, a Tennessee business icon and Maxie Jarman, and there were others in the race. What was your secret? What made you the candidate that was going to win? I think my secret in making progress was simply the fact that I felt with all my heart that it had to happen. At that point in Tennessee's political history, we desperately needed a Republican candidate from West Tennessee. And the three that you mentioned, well, you didn't mention Claude, Claude Robertson, he was the third, but they were all either from the Middle or East. And I, I was devoted to the idea that West Tennessee should play a part in view of the fact that Congressman Brock from East Tennessee wanted to be the senator that year, and Howard Baker from East Tennessee was already the, the senator. Now you wrote an autobiography about all this called From a Standing Start about 10 years ago. You had an interesting way to spend your primary night. You went out and shot pool. You didn't have a big party. What? No, we didn't have a big party because we weren't too sure how <laughs> it was all going to come out. But it did come out well. And, uh, and it came out because of how well you did with the vote in both your hometown of Memphis and in Shelby County. It was phenomenal. You got over 90% of the vote. That's right, Saints I Saints don't get 90% of the vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll s never cease being grateful to Shelby County and Memphis for what they meant to me. But you think the key for you was that you were from that part of the state, and West Tennessee very much wanted, and Memphis perhaps in particular, wanted to have a governor of their own, from their own, to be in Nashville. Without question, that was a major key that opened the door. Well, let's come up to modern times. There's going to be an open governor's race in 2018. Candidates are already scurrying around, talking. Is your phone ringing? Are people talking to you These among these people who are thinking about running for governor? Would they like your support in 2018? I've had some very nice visits, uh, and I've enjoyed so much meeting the caliber of people representing the Republican Party who are interested in being governor. I tell you, we're going to have a wonderful choice to make from among those people. 
from the folks that you've met and you've liked? Do you have you have a favorite so far? Anybody you think you might want to support in the primary at this point? I, I have resisted leaning in <laughs> any direction. Now, the national parties had quite a tussle last year electing our president. Uh, did you come to support the, the person who is now the president, Donald Trump, who was the Republican nominee? I don't. I, I don't suspect you were a supporter of his from the beginning. I was not. I. I, I was not, and I did have a candidate. Casey uh, was my candidate, as I recall. Uh, but the moment Trump succeeded in obtaining the nomination, he was my man. And I have been consistently for him, praying for him, and otherwise hoping that he can achieve what he wants to achieve. What do you think of roughly his first month in office so far? Well, it's been a mixed bag, as you could expect that it would be. Uh, he's had some great initiatives. He's demonstrated courage, and he's demonstrated foresight that our previous president simply didn't have available. Uh, Bob Corker, a Tennessee senator, uh, along with Lamar Alexander in Washington, has recently described President Trump as a wrecking ball so far in Washington. As someone, when you came into office, you were the change agent in Tennessee. You were the lone Republican among the, Repu among the Democrats in Nashville. You were trying to change state government. From your experience, can you go too fast or too far, too quickly in something like this? How do, how do you go about making that kind of profound change? It's not easy. It's very uh, testy in terms of how far you can go without uh, uh, raising the uh, resentment of key people that you need to help you achieve what you want to achieve as governor. Uh, the wrecking ball uh, comment is a little surprising. However, I see that as a means of saying he's a guy who's come in to tear down all the junk that took place the swamp. for the last eight years. <laughs> Go to Winfield Dunn is our guest on Inside Politics, reflecting back on his political career and getting his thoughts about what's going on today. Back to continue our conversation with the former governor after you watch these messages.